Right, in one of my recent videos, I showed quite a few products that I've used over the years and uh, got a lot of interest. So I thought I'd share a few more. So here's a few more. Um, it's not actually all of my kit. Um, I've got lots in various other storage compartments, but I uh, thought I'd go through these. Let's take a look. Right, first up then, connectors. Um, when I started out, I used these things, header pins, um, yeah, header pins like that. And then you need the cable to, to connect into those. Um, and I guess because I used breadboards, I ended up going down that path because these are common on breadboards. And then you buy a kit like this, you get the plastic kind of surround that holds it all in. And then you crimp these horrible things onto your cable and you need the right tool for that. Otherwise it's, it's, it's too cumbersome, really. Um, so that's one kit I bought um, and a similar type of kit there, right? Plastic housings, male and female um, connectors to go with it, all right? But a far better option is these, in my view. These are called JST connectors. Um, I've got two kits. I think I might have some more over there. Um, but these are PCB mount, so you get um, your connectors in there, you solder those onto your board, and then you comes with a whole load of crimp-on connectors that you can make your own cables up. Um, uh, and then you get some plastic surrounds for that as well to make it neat and tidy and all, all, in, one, all in one module. Now the good thing about these is they actually have a little clip that locks into place or semi locks into place you can pull them out but you have to put a bit of force there's a little recessed part there where the connector pushes into it um, there's that kit there uh, from iZoki I'll, I'll include the links on the bottom of the video and there's another there's another kit there these are JSTs as well these are kind of inline connectors you get the crimps there so the kind of example is where I did a little PCB design, just playing around with PCB design, a project board. Um, and there's a rotary encoder look. Unfortunately, you have to use the header pin connectors at that end because that's how these are manufactured. So I have to make that end up in that manner. But this is much better. That would go into here. You can only put it one way round, unlike your header pins. Polarized, okay, so that clips in. That's nice and solid, right? That's not gonna come out. Okay, these are great. So, highly recommend them. I'll include links down below. Okay, and just to add to that, for those JST connectors, this is the correct tool, okay? Don't try anything else. Uh, this is much slimmer than all my other crimp tools, and I've, I've tried various ways of doing it. Get the right tool, and you won't have a problem, okay? Uh, the reference to this is a PA09. Again, I'll include the link uh, in my comments below. Next up, voltage regulators. This is the LM series, the LM78 series. Um, use these all the time. It's one of the simplest ways to get a, um, a voltage that you're trying to obtain from you know, a, a higher voltage. Um, don't go and buy these individually or twos and threes. Just buy a, just buy a kit. They're dirt cheap, um, but you know if you've used them once, the likelihood is you're going to want them again. And I like to have them on the shelf, so when I want to start a project, they're they're ready for me. I've labelled these up uh, with the various ones, so it's nice and easy. It didn't come pre-labelled. There you go. Um, what's that one there? That's an LM7808, so that's an eight volt regulator. Okay, nice. And typical use of one of them. This was my um, remote PA triggering device. This is with the prototype. I've since built, got a manufactured PCB for this. Looks much more professional. Uh, this weren't too bad, actually. Um, all the wiring on the back's a bit uh, unslightly, but the top was fine. But there you go, there's a voltage regulator there. So this accepted um, nine volt battery input on the terminals here. And then this would step it down to five volts to drive my ESP32 and some of these other components. So that's a, the LM7802. Five out of that kit there, all right? Right, if you're making lots of cables, or any amount of cables really, then um, you can make them an awful lot neater and a bit more 
robust by using heat shrink on the ends like that. So when you strip back your cable, rather than this stretching against the edge of the insulation um, and looking a bit unsightly, it's nice to finish it off with a bit of heat shrink like that. Um, so here's a couple of heat shrink kits that I use. Um, this one I like because it's um, multi-colour and different sizes, so you kind of use the one that just fits onto your cable and then you heat shrink that down, okay? And then here's another kit that I had, which is um, all black one. There's the manufacturer there. Again, I'll put links in the below. But on the topic of heat shrink, don't use a lighter or, or a match to shrink this down. Um, you, yeah, you'll end up marking the cable. It, it doesn't really do a good job. You, you, you know, it'll work and definitely don't use a soldering iron. You, you'll ruin the tip on your soldering iron. So invest in a proper heat shrink gun. This, is, this was dirt cheap. I will, again, put a link below. And I was really surprised at how good a quality. This, this is kind of a nice, solid but rubberized feel to it. Um, it's mains powered, I didn't go for battery because obviously you pay a premium for that. Um, but you know, simple, plug it in. It's got a little heat shield there, so when you put in your cable in place, that circulates the hot air right around your heat shrink and does a fantastic job. Next up, LEDs, of course, everybody uses LEDs. Um, I love LEDs <laughs> and I use quite a lot of them. Um, this is one of many boxes I've bought, but it's absolutely brilliant. It's all organised for you, um, although I th think I've jumbled them up a bit. Different colours and different diameters, okay? So don't buy them in small quantities, just buy a kit, um, and then you've always got them there, all right? And on the topic of LEDs, um, if you saw one of my previous videos where I was doing breadboard tips, a good tip is to get yourself some resistor networks or resistor packs, I call them. That's what they used to be called in the old days. Um, and these are basically multiple resistors in one package. Um, there's a little dot on here somewhere, which I can't see right now. Uh, yes, it's there, I believe. You can probably just about see it. But the dot indicates the ground or the common pin, um, and that that pin is then, if this, this is a 1K version, that's 1K linked to that pin, 1K linked to that, 1K linked to that, 1K linked to that. So by inserting that, connecting this to ground, you could put eight LEDs off of that without having to worry about eight um, current limiting resistors that you've also got to wire in. So they're great. If you want to see that in action, see my uh, breadboard tips uh, video. Okay, next one. Dip switches, these are dip switches. If you get a little kit like this, you get various um, configurations of them, you know, the number of switches. We'll just go down to down to an individual one, I think. Yeah, an individual dip switch. Can't see the point of that, really. Um, but, you know, once you've got eight of them or four of them or whatever, they're, they're really handy. I mean, I can't remember what this project was. It's obviously one of the simplest in the world I've ever built. But um, this kind of arrangement, put them on a PCB, with a microcontroller that could be, uh, you know, configuration settings for whatever this is running, or perhaps a device address if you're connecting lots of these together or something like that. Um, and it takes up a very small footprint on your board, and you know, there's four switches, um, all nicely packaged for you. They do fit onto breadboards, um, but they don't actually sit very well, so they go in, but. Um, yeah, if you're if you're moving that, look, it just it just comes out. So unfortunately, the the legs are not long enough. So on a breadboard, maybe a different idea for prototyping in that way. If you went with you know a much bigger configuration, then obviously you have got more pins to hold it down. So that is kind of secure, but not enough to carry the weight of the breadboard. I could use that. Um, yeah, <laughs> if I put my finger there, I can I can use it, all right? But ideally for when you come to sort of a semi-permanent soldering up something, that's, that's a nice arrangement like that. Okay, so that's dip switches. Okay, another highly used component, capacitors. Uh, these are ceramic capacitors. I've bought uh, electrolytic kits. I uh, don't have one here to show you because I think I've taken them all out and put them in, into another container. 
Um, but yeah, I, I use loads of these, and of course you need lots of different values so that you've got them to hand when you need them. Um, but these are just uh, cheap on, on Amazon. I mean, look, 184, all various different sizes. Um, and they, they're perfect, they're nice and neat and tidy, they don't take up a lot of space. Um, perfect, you can just about read the, the numbering on them. Um, I've got bad eyesight, I can just about see it. So that's a nice large kit there and another one there. Again, I'll put a link in the video below. But uh, you can see how they end up once you solder them onto a board. This is a PCB I manufactured, but even on your own test boards, you know, they look nice and neat and tidy. Okay. Next up, Zena diodes. Um, now, if Zena diodes work um, similar to an ordinary diode in the in Conventional current flow, they allow, they allow the current to flow in one direction, but not the other. And that little black stripe on there, that's kind of this indicates the side that blocks the, blocks the current path. So that's, that's how you'd orient them on your board. Um, but Zenith diodes, they're quite special. They, you would actually use them in reverse polarity, um, or reverse bias it's called, and they break down at a specific voltage. Um, and these are good for designing voltage regulating circuits or voltage references that you might be that you might be doing. Um, so this kit is great, although they don't they're not that precise. You need to test them under your circuit conditions and get the closest you can. But look how many that you get. You get every value under the sun here. So um, yeah, it's a great it's great value. So look, there's a three volt. There's a 7.5 volts, uh, 6.8, it goes on and on and on. And you know, for the price you're paying, it's absolutely brilliant value. And you've got all of that to hand when you need it. Yeah, and on Zener diodes, there you go. This is a, an example use of them. This was my um, automatic ANS simulator. Uh, some of you probably don't know what an ANS is, but um, I've got videos on my channel if you want to find out. Um, but there you go, there's three Zener diodes there, and I'm using them to create specific voltage references that this, the rest of the circuit controls and drives an output based on which, uh, you know, which one I selected there. Right, so that's Zener diodes. When you're finished with your kind of breadboard experimenting and you want to make it more permanent or semi-permanent, then I found these to be really nice and tidy, nice and clean. So this is a little kit from Aligu. And yeah, they do loads of stuff actually that I've bought. Um, and then in here, I've used quite a lot of them already, various sizes, and they're really solid. Yeah, they're really nice and solid boards. Um, and I like, I like them, they're, they're tidy. I don't like the copper scrape board or whatever it's called. I, just, I don't know, I just find it, it looks messy and um, it doesn't work and you have to scrape the parts off that you don't need. Uh, I'd much rather, make the connection if I want it, or, or use jump wire on the underside, kind of like that, you know. Um, I prefer that, having all, all of this, this stuff. So, yeah, they're great. And I actually did find um, some larger ones, which I've used for various product pro projects, because um, I use them so often, all right? Yeah, and then um, carrying on from these PCBs, once you've got it there, I mean, you might want to start thinking about mounting devices like um, I have done here. So these, these hex standoff pillars here, um, they are positioned just right to mount my LCD display on there. There's only two I've put in, but that, I found that the two it was sufficient. It's nice and secure on there, actually. Um, so what you need then is a selection of hex pillars and, and various screws to go with it. So you buy kits like that already to go, okay. Um, and then when you're experimenting around, I've found that uh, these kits with, you know, you get loads of uh, logic ICs here, um, and some of them you may not be familiar with, so it's nice to buy a kit like that, and you, you don't get a lot of each individual one, but once you find one that's of use, like this 405, one and five two, I use a lot actually, um, then you go off and buy more, but at least you've got one of each type, um, so, you know, you've got AND gates, you've got um, multiplexers, um, you've got NAND and OR gates, you've got flip-flops, all kinds of things in, in there 
that you can play around with. And when you're thinking of a project to do, you think, what can I use to, to drive that? You've probably got the, the solution in this one kit. And then you can go off and buy more um, if you find that of use. So yeah, I'll put another link in the description below. Okay, next up, kind of the inverse component to capacitors, really, because these behave kind of the reverse of capacitors. Um, these are inductors. And again, not, not um, fantastic. They're, they're not that accurate, but for the price, and you get loads and loads of values. So for breadboarding and experimenting to get your projects you know, near enough right, then these are ideal. You've got them, you've got them there at the ready. Okay, that's inductors. Next up, uh, PCB mount, surface mount, uh, potentiometers or trim pots. Um, so in this kit, we've got from 100 ohm to one mega and everything in between. Um, so these are not that great for breadboards. You could probably put them in, but they're likely to spring out again. But um, these are not something that, that you know your your user is going to start um, turning <laughs> all the time. It's something that you put on the board as, as a trim pot. That's the, that's the purpose of them. So a kind of a calibration setting or final adjustment once you've manufactured the board and assembled your board, um, it allows you to make that fine adjustment and, and leave it like that, okay? Okay, one last one so we can bring this video to conclusion because I have got still a great big pile over there. Um, but I'll be going forever like this this rate, but uh, transistors, of course, Ev everyone uses transistors or, uh, you know, if you're serious about electronics and you must be using transistors, they're at the heart of everything we do, really. So um, get yourself a kit of those. So all the common standard transistors are available in this kit. These are all BJTs. Um, I don't think there's any MOSFETs or anything in there, uh, but there are NPN and PMP types, okay? So, yeah, I'll again put a link. These, these were absolutely fine for me. The 2N222 I use quite a lot. Okay, catch you later.